And for the very first time, the woman who says she was attacked by former Seattle Seahawks player Chad Wheeler is speaking out. Last week, you may recall, Wheeler pleaded not guilty to three charges, including domestic violence assault. His ex-girlfriend showed up in court to face him. She says that Wheeler is still a threat to her safety. And now she's sharing her story in an exclusive interview with CBS This Morning. She spoke with our national correspondent, Jerika Duncan. Good morning to you, Jerika. Good morning to you, Gail. Her name is Aaliyah Taylor, and it was a leaked photo of her injuries that made national headlines. Well, now she's ready to share her story. And most importantly, she wants domestic violence survivors to know they're not alone. We want to warn you, some of what you're about to see and hear is graphic. I still have to regularly get, like, my concussion checked. I have bolts and, still, and a steel plate I'm going to have forever in my arm. I'm going to, have, going to have to deal with this the rest of my life. That's the reality for 27-year-old Aaliyah Taylor after she says she was attacked by her then-boyfriend, Chad Wheeler. Taylor says the pair dated for six months with barely any arguments. We were like best friends. We did everything together. I even introduced him to my family. We would babysit my nephew together. But according to Taylor, that all changed on January 22nd, starting with a text from Wheeler that he'd shaved his head. He loved, just loved this long hair, um, refused to cut it. And it, it surprised me and it worried me. I came home and Chad was trying to play it off as if he just kind of cut his hair. But then as time went on throughout the day, he started going downhill emotionally. Taylor later told police it was the beginning of a manic episode, adding she knew Wheeler suffered from bipolar disorder. Then, according to Taylor, Wheeler snapped into a dark place. And he, um, he, he stood up and he told me to bow down. and. I asked him why, and he, he didn't respond. He just told me to bow down again, and I told him no, and he, he immediately grabbed my neck, and that's, um, that's when things began. Do you recall what happened after that? When he grabbed my neck, he, he threw me on the bed, and um, I remember looking up at him and asking him, please stop, Chad, it's me. And um, I just immediately knew the look in his eyes. That was it. Taylor, who is 5'9", says that's when Wheeler, 6'7", weighing more than 300 pounds, tried to choke her. According to Taylor, she blacked out twice before the attack was over. I had touched my face, and I looked down, and there was, there was blood on my hand. And I, I remember getting up and running to the bathroom. Chad was standing by the bed, by the doorway, and he was sipping his smoothie. And was like, wow, you're, you're still alive. Please help me now. I'm going to die. Taylor says she then locked herself in the bathroom, called 911, and texted her family and Wheeler's father for help. According to police reports, it took three officers and two sets of handcuffs to restrain Wheeler. Police said Wheeler kept apologizing as he was arrested. Do you think that Chad's behavior is directly connected to a mental health issue? To be honest, I don't know. He went and ate dinner after doing this to me, and he didn't take the same approach with the cops as he did with me. The Seahawks dropped Wheeler, saying the team strongly condemns this act of domestic violence. If convicted, Wheeler faces 8 to 12 years in prison. Last week, he pleaded not guilty to two domestic violence-related charges and one count of resisting arrest. Taylor was in the courtroom. Why was it so important for you to appear in court? I didn't want him to think that, that he had that power over me, that I wasn't going to defend myself. And I thought, how easy would that be for him and his legal team to be able to say whatever they want without having to look me in the eye. Do you think he should serve prison time for what he did to you? Yes. Yes. I definitely do think that he should. I have to say the hardest part of all this wasn't, wasn't the surgeries, it wasn't any of that. It was getting a call from my niece and nephews. They thought they had lost me. 
and the pain in their voice. I will never forget that. I will never forget that. And she doesn't want her story to be forgotten either. How grateful are you to be alive? Beyond grateful, I really feel like God has blessed me with another chance. And I want to try to use the time I've been blessed with um, to help other people and to get this story out and make sure people don't feel alone and that this doesn't happen again. CBS News reached out to the attorneys for Chad Wheeler. They declined to comment on the case. Wheeler's trial is set to begin in Washington state in April. A reminder, if you need help related to domestic violence or mental health, we've posted free resources on our website, cbsnews.com. Um, a lot of strength exhibited oh, by this young yes, lady. Yes, very brave. So important, young woman. so powerful that she's speaking up, and especially the pictures, Dariq, are yeah. heartbreaking. And you look at the numbers, her height, his height, six, her weight, his six, weight. Six, seven, right. five, nine, yeah. A, a terrifying change in his demeanor. A, yes. A shift six months of dating and then suddenly that? Yeah, and she said not even an argument. Um, you could tell she was very conflicted because she cared so yeah. much about him. Yeah. Um, but this is one of those uh, difficult stories to tell because it's not just the domestic violence, but also recognizing that there is a mental health component in this. Yes, it's interesting that she had to say to him at one point, Chad, it's me. It's me. Right. It's Although me. as a matter of mental health awareness, being bipolar does not mean you beat exactly. up your no. family members. Exactly. Um, it's a very important Something else point. going on here. All right, Jerika, thank you very much.